Hello, my smart and talented friends, and welcome to the Global Science Network. Today, I am going to show you how to use LT Spice, which is a powerful, free, open source circuit simulator. We will start out building a simple circuit. Then a full adder will be built using NAND gates. This full adder will be turned into a symbol. We will use four of these full adder symbols to build a 4-bit calculator. Finally, we will compare the output of the A-stable multivibrator measured with an oscilloscope with the results from LT Spice and the Easy Ada model, which was shown in the last video. As you probably know, we are working on building a 4-bit computer using individual transistors, and then we are going to build artificial neurons as we work our way towards creating non-biological human consciousness. Let's get to it. Now let's draw our first circuit. This is what LT Spice should look like whenever you open it up. We will go File, New Schematic. Now we are going to want to add some components. This right here will open our component menu. And the first thing we want to do is add a voltage source. So we just click Voltage and then click OK. And then to drop a voltage source, we will just left click. And then we'll hit Escape. And the next thing we need is a resistor. So we can select a resistor right here. And there's actually also a bunch of shortcut keys. So if we go edit, we can actually just press R to get a resistor, C for a capacitor, L for an inductor, D for diode. But in this case, I'm just going to pick it. And then here it is. To rotate it, you're going to want to hit Control R. So now it's rotated. And then we will left click to drop it. We'll hit Escape. And then the next component that we need is an LED. So again, add component. And we need LED, which is right here. And we hit OK. And we will drop the LED down. And then finally, we need a ground, which we can actually just pick right here to add our ground. Hit Escape. And now we need to draw a wire around our circuit. This is the wire tool. So we will just draw a wire around the circuit now. And then I am going to add another wire right here. Now we need to set all of the values. So we are going to right click the resistor and we are going to set this to 1K. And then we will right click the voltage source and we will make it five volts. And now this circuit is set up and ready to run. We can click run by clicking this little guy who's running right here. But we need to set the type of simulation that we're running. A lot of times we will run this transient simulation, but in this case, we're just going to run an operating point sim. So it's .op space one for one second, click OK, and then it drops this here and it shows us our values. So it shows us our voltage at node one, our voltage at node two, and then our currents going through the different components. And you might be saying, well, what is node one and what is node two? So if you close this, and if you actually highlight over this right here, in the bottom left corner, it says this is node one, DC operating point, five volts. And if you go right here, it says, this is node two, DC operating point, 692 millivolts. So that's a quick way to actually get these values. You can also left click right here and it will actually drop the voltage values. And you might be saying, well, how do I get current? Well, if you actually right click one of these that's down, you can actually select any value you want. So we want the current through resistor one and we actually have to delete this part and then we'll click okay. And now we have our current and our voltage at different points in the circuit. You can see the very large number of decimal points here. I'm going to change that right now. If you actually right click this voltage value, we can actually edit this expression. So we can actually edit it so that it's rounded. And then we'll do the same thing for current. So we'll right click it. We're gonna add this big expression to round the current value. Hit okay. And it's important to note that our current value is actually negative here. And that might seem really weird, but it's actually just because this resistor is actually flipped to be the wrong direction. So the direction of these resistors does matter. And just by looking at the circuit, you can't really tell. You kind of just have to run it and see. So we'll select this resistor and we'll rotate it 180 degrees and we will click run again. And now this time, whenever it runs, now our current is positive. Another kind of strange thing here is that we have an LED, but the voltage drop is actually only 693 millivolts. It actually should be like 1.7 or 1.8 volts. So this is not the right LED that we want by default. So if you right click this LED, we can do pick new diode. And there's actually an extremely large number of diodes to pick from. 
So if you go scroll through here, type, you can see, find another LED. And this Fairchild one I found had a pretty good value that was close to a yellow or red LED. So we'll hit OK. And this actually changed the uh, LED that we're using. We will click Run. And now we're going to see that this voltage value here is going to change. So now our voltage drop across this LED is 1.762 volts, which is a lot better. Let's say we're still not happy with this voltage drop value here and we want it to better match an exact LED that we have. Well, we can actually create our own model. So if you right click this, pick a new diode, we'll actually copy this model right here just by going Control C, we'll close this. And then right here, if you hover over this, you can see that there's a spice directive. So if we click this, and we paste in our model here and we hit OK. Now the model for this LED is actually described right here on our circuit. Now you might be wondering what are all of these different values? Well, I'll add a comment right here and I will paste in the definition for all of these variables. So the three important ones right here, the three important LED parameters are IS, RS, and N. These two have very little effect on the model and these actually don't change the model at all. So if we right click here, we can actually just delete all of these other ones. We'll leave the LED type and click OK. And now we can see that this model is a lot simpler. So let's say we want this model to be a yellow LED. So we'll change the model name to yellow LED, yellow underscore LED. I'll copy this name to make sure that I have it spelled correctly. And I'll hit OK. And then I'll rename our LED here to yellow LED. And then let's change one of these values to see if we can actually change the voltage drop. So we'll right click this and we'll make this E to the minus 24th. And we'll hit OK. And now let's see what happens whenever we run the simulation. So now our voltage drop is actually 1.938 volts. So it did change. And you shouldn't just guess to try and get these voltage drops and currents to match you should actually find the values for a specific LED. Let's say that we did create a really good model for a yellow LED that we want to use in the future. We can copy this and we can actually save it as a component. So we'll hit OK. So if you go into your documents folder and then LT Spice and you go into LIB for library, we have components, our subcircuits, and our symbols. So we want to go to components. And an LED is a diode, so we actually want to open up the diode model. We want to open up this standard one right here, so we'll right-click it, edit in Notepad++. And I actually added our model already, so it was model, I called it yellow LED2, and then it just has our three simple parameters, and I hit file save. And I actually had to close and then reopen the program for this to actually be able to be found. But now you can see if I right-click this LED, pick new diode, we actually have our LED as the top one, and it's just this really simple model. One more thing I wanted to show you about this really simple circuit is let's say I wanted to calculate the voltage drop across this resistor. I can just right click this voltage right here, and then I can actually type an equation in right here. So we can actually do the voltage at node one, and then we can do minus the voltage at node two. And then this will actually show the voltage drop across this resistor. We might not want to put it right here, so we might want to move it up here and say, okay, well now we're looking at the voltage drop across this resistor right here. Another way we can see the voltages is if we run a transient simulation. So if we go to simulate and simulation command, and now we'll run a transient simulation for one second, we'll hit okay, we'll drop this here, we'll delete our operating point one, and now we will click run. And when this happens, we're going to get a graph. So we're going to get our voltages and currents versus time. And you can see down here, our time is one second. So now, whenever we highlight over the circuit, we have a probe. We can measure current and we can measure voltages. So if we click right here, we'll get five volts. Then if we click over here, we will get that our voltage right here is about 1.9 volts. The next circuit we are going to look at is right here, and this is a full adder built with NAND gates. So right here, here is the logic gate level diagram here, where we have NAND gate one, two, three, and four. And if you look here on our actual transistor level circuit diagram, these two transistors right here are NAND gate one, these two are NAND gate two, 
and then three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. If you're not sure how to build a NAND gate or not sure how to build a full adder, I do have separate videos on how those work, but let's just look real quick and see how this works. So, and if you ever like way zoomed out and you don't, and you want to center your screen, you can actually just click this button right here and it will center it. So if we look at our inputs, we have inputs A, B, and carry in. And then for our outputs, this is the sum bit and this is the carry out bit. But in this case, we're just displaying both of these outputs on LEDs. And if we click run, none of these are hooked up. So we will see what happens. We'll click run. And we can see that the output voltage is say 32 millivolts, which basically means that these LEDs are off. So now let's wire up input A and we'll click run again and we'll see what happens. And we can see that the output of this first bit is on and the output of the second bit is off. So we have an input of one and it equals one. So now we will hook up A and B and we will click run. And now we should have a value of two. So now the second bit is on, so we have one plus one equals two. So now the only other input we can add is our carry in. So we'll add our carry in here and click run again. And now we should have both on. So now we have one plus one plus one equals one one, which is three in binary. And now let's say we want to use multiple full adders in our circuit. So we actually want to turn this into a symbol. So let's start that process. The first thing we'll do is we'll actually just delete a lot of these inputs and outputs that are just wired up this way. And we'll delete this. We'll delete the fact that our simulation is running. Now we want to add some labels. So we can see right here, this is our label tool. So we actually want to add an input and we will start with the power input. So we have power, we want it to come in right here. And then we want to have A and B also come in here. So I'm just gonna draw these lines out so that they all line up just to make it look nice. Now we want another label. We want it to be an input and we'll call it A. We'll add it here. And then we'll do the same thing for B. And just to learn a new tool, we can click the copy tool. So we'll copy this, place it here, right click or right click it and we'll call it B. We also want to add the carry in input. So we'll just draw this over here as well. And again, yeah, we'll just copy this, right click, and we will call this C in. Okay. And now we want to do the same thing for our outputs. So we will go here and we will click output. And the first one is the sum output. We'll click okay. Add that here, we'll copy it just to make it easy. And then we will rename this one C out for carry out. Okay. And now this is actually ready to be turned into a symbol. So if we actually go up to here to our hierarchy and we go open this sheet as a symbol and it will say, we can't find the sheet as a symbol. Should we automatically generate one? And we will click yes. And here we go. This is the symbol for our full adder. Some of these aren't in the same order that we had them before. So let's rearrange them. So we'll click our move tool and we will just move these around so that they're in the same order that they were on the diagram. So our move tool again, we'll draw this one here, this one here, we'll move the power here. And then we want our sum to be above our carry out. So we'll do that real quick. We'll put sum all the way up here and then our carry out we will put here. And now our symbol for our full adder is good to go. This insert name isn't something that we modify here. It's something that we modify later once we actually insert the full adder. So we will click file save on this one. And now we can build a new circuit that actually uses these full adders. So if we actually go to our component tool here and we actually, this is the location where most of the components are, but I actually just have them saved onto my desktop. And you can see the full adder is the component that we just created, click OK. And now we can drop this onto our circuit just like it was any other component. So we could drop four of these on here and we can create our four bit calculator. Since I already did this, I'm just going to delete these four and talk about this four bit calculator now. So here is our four bit calculator and we have our four full adders. We have a four bit input plus a four bit input equals a five bit output. 
So for these input values, this one right here is a one, two, four, and eight, one, two, four, and eight, and their value is determined based on their position. And then for our output, this value is a one, two, four, eight, and 16. If you're not sure how this works, I made another video called How Computers Add Numbers, where I explain this in detail. So let's run this circuit and see what happens. We'll click Run, and we will look at our values. Right now, they're all set at 32 millivolts, which means all of these LEDs are off. So we have zero plus zero plus zero equals zero. So let's try and add something. We'll connect uh, two, and we'll connect the two over here. So we have two plus two. And now we will click Run, and the output should be four. So now we have two plus two equals four. And you can see that this LED right here is on in our simulation because the voltage changed from 32 millivolts to 1.762 volts. So this one is on. Well, what happens if we add two more, right? So now we'll turn on this one and this one right here. So now we have three plus three, and this should equal six. So we'll click run. And now we can see we have three plus three equals six, which is four plus two. So these two LEDs right here are on. Now let's see what happens if we turn all of our inputs on. And we'll even turn our carry in on. So now it should be 15 plus 15 plus one equals 31. And let's see if it does. All the LEDs should be on. So yep, now we have all of the output LEDs on. So this is working properly. I did simulate a four bit calculator in the last video using Easy Ada. The only difference is this time I actually built these full adders into a symbol to make it a little bit simpler. And then I didn't actually have a single pole, single throw switch within LT Spice. I didn't actually know how to find that. So I just made a bunch of resistors here that, are, that were all one ohm to just sort of make it so that if I wanna turn these off now, I can just click these here by cutting them. And now we're back to where we started, where we have zero plus zero equals zero. So now if we click run, we'll see that all of our voltages are turned off. And now we can add whatever values we want to. This circuit here is an A-stable multivibrator, and these LEDs here are going to turn on and off. And we actually want to see when these are turning on and off, so we're going to be running a transient simulation here for 10 seconds. So let's click Run, and we can see that a display pops up, and it's running from zero to 10 seconds. Well, now we have to select what exactly we want to display. So we actually want to display both of these LEDs, so we're going to add another plot plane, so we'll do that. And then on this top plot plane, we want to select this voltage value right here. And then for this plot plane, we want to select this voltage right here. So this is the output of the A-stable multivibrator, and this is the inverse of the output of the A-stable multivibrator. So we can see here that we have a nice clock signal that's basically a square wave. And then the inverse, whenever this one goes low, this one goes high, and we can see when these LEDs turn on and off based on what the voltage is at this point and this point in the circuit. Another good thing to do might be to actually add a label on these outputs. So what we can do here is we can add a label and we'll call this output one. We'll click OK and we'll add it right here. And then we'll also add it here, except for this time we'll call it output two. And this time whenever we run the simulation, we can do the same thing we did before, add a plot plane, click the top one, and now we can just click out one, and then click this plot plane and click out two. And now notice that here, whenever it says voltage, we're looking at out one, and here we're looking at the voltage of out two. And I changed the color on the display here to be default, and you can actually see that this dark blue is pretty useless, so you can't actually really see the waveform. So to change the color of the waveform, you go to tools, color preference, and then you go to waveform, and then you can see the different voltages right here. So in this case, you can see the dark one is our V2. So we'll go V2, and then we'll make this a pink waveform. So now if we hit OK, now we can see this waveform a lot better. So the green waveform is the output, and then the pink one is the inverse of the output. And the magnitude of the voltage here is going to pretty much be set by this LED here. So let's swap out this LED and see if the voltage value changes. All right, I did change these LEDs to be the Fairchild LEDs. And now whenever we ran the simulation, our voltages went down. So now they're actually below 1.8 volts. 
So the magnitude of these voltages is actually just based on the LED model. But we also want to look at the timing of when these turn on and off. So we really want to know what the wavelength is. So if we highlight over this and we look at the bottom left corner, we can see that the time is 5.22 seconds right here. And if we go over here, the time is 6.57. So if we subtract these two, we get that our wavelength is 1.35 seconds. And the wavelength in LT Spice and the wavelength in EZ Eta were actually exactly the same. The wavelength on the oscilloscope was 1.136 seconds, which was not an exact match. So depending on why you are building the circuit and how close your values have to be will determine if you need to tweak this model or not. In the last video, I showed you how to use Easy Ada, which is another free circuit simulation tool. So if you want to watch that video, click right here.